how to find good educational apps, tips to find appropriate apps for your multilingual kids. Do you want to know how to tell good from bad apps for your multilingual child? Stay posted because here's how you spot the jewels. Hello there and welcome to Multilingual Family, a vlog for cosmopolitan people like you that helps you raise your multilingual children successfully. On this channel I share with you lots of tips, know-how and useful material, so consider subscribing to this channel and joining my mailing list. The link is in the description below to get this week's free printable, which is a useful guideline that will help you choose the right apps for your kids and remember what is important when it comes to media consumption. Let's get started. There are so many children apps available nowadays that it is getting quite hard for parents to choose. The fact that many of them are interactive, however, doesn't mean that they are automatically appropriate for children. Not long ago, we discussed in my house what type of electronic device would suit my four-year-old daughter. And in the end, we decided to buy her a big screened smartphone. The purpose of the device is to have access to songs, audiobooks, the internet, YouTube, Audible, Epic, Profax, and other good programs, but only to use and consume very specific and carefully selected content for a limited time. I looked into some apps as well, but I have to say that maybe not even one out of ten was appropriate for children judging out of a pedagogical perspective. Let me explain that in a minute. Please hit that like button if you wish to see more content like this one. The most common children apps are either games or learning apps. For both types, app stores provide us with general age guidelines. Now, pay attention because this is important to know for parents. These guidelines don't say anything about the quality of the content, since they don't take into consideration the type of ads that appear, what buying possibilities are offered in the app, what kind of interaction is needed, nor do they give any pedagogical advice. The same goes for the children and family section of the app stores. The guidelines in the Google Play Store, for example, are based on the Pan-European Game Information Regulations and the USK criteria, that, at least in some parts of Europe. That may differ depending on where you live, but in Europe the description of the apps which lead to the age guidelines are written by the creators of the apps themselves. In the case of the App Store of Apple, it's Apple which creates the age guidelines. What does this all mean? It basically means that every person that creates an app that is intended for children can write if it's suited for kids, regardless if they are experts in the field or not. In other words, to protect your children, it is needed that we parents take a critical look at every single application that we want to let our multilingual kids use before they get to try it out. Actually, you should try every app first and check if the following cr criteria apply to the app. So here's the criteria for appropriate children apps. The application has to be easy to use, be uncluttered, does not overstimulate with fast blinking animations, contains no violence or other inappropriate content, is mostly free of ads and don't link to social media or include in-app purchase. Most of the free apps contain in-app purchase and lots of ads which animate users to play endlessly. That's the main reason why they are inappropriate for children. If you want to use reading out loud apps, make sure that the voice speaks clearly and not too fast. The program should allow the child to get immersed into the story without being constantly distracted. 
This is important to train the concentration span of your child. The more distractions, the less will your multilingual kid be able to focus. At this point, I also need to mention that media is not a babysitter. That hurts because it works so well. Kids are never as quiet and well behaved as in front of screens. Yeah. Let's be honest here, as parents of multilingual kids you feel exhausted sometimes and need a break, sure, but just be aware of the risks it carries to use media too often to keep the kids calm. Some parents even use computer games as a reward or threat their kids to take it away if they misbehave. By doing that kids learn to put too much unnecessary attention on digital gaming. So if you can, Hmm, what else? Oh yes, it's very important to limit the time kids are exposed to screens. There is a rule of thumb called 36912 that information experts of the organization Jugend und Medien in Switzerland worked out. And that states that there should be no screen time before the age of three, no gaming console before the age of six, no internet before the age of 9 and no unsupervised internet before the age of 12. Other German experts from the site schauhin.info advise that kids under the age of 5 shouldn't be exposed to screens more than half an hour per day and kids until the age of 9 no longer than one hour per day. So as you can see also experts have different opinions. What is important to bear in mind in my eyes is that for preschoolers and younger kids, direct contact and real human interaction is crucial to their healthy development. The more time they spend using media, the less time they have to gain all those valuable experiences they need to be able to thrive in school and ultimately in life. I'm interested in knowing what your opinion is regarding this topic, so please share your thoughts in the comment section. That was it for now, I hope you liked the content. Thanks to you again for joining me on this video called How to find good educational apps, tips to find appropriate apps for multilingual kids. Give me a thumbs up, share and subscribe. Don't forget to download the free guideline. If you're already subscribed, just check your inbox. Watch also my other videos for more information. This was Multilingual Family. Keep on doing a great job and talk to you soon.